Uh, so, you're in a band, or you're a songwriter, you have some songs you want recorded, you don't really have access to a recording studio, you don't have that kind of budget, you don't really have access to much recording gear of your own, well, let's take a look at if you could buy one microphone to record your entire band. One, what would that microphone be? How would you use it? Would it even sound good? What does it cost? Let's take a look. So today we're going to talk about if you had one microphone and, oh, hang on. And here it is, the infamous Shure, there you go, SM57. So let's talk a little bit about the history of this microphone and why it's such a good pick for something like this. Now you could do this same type of thing with a lot of different microphones. And this is just one type. One, I picked it because it's very affordable. Typically $99, unless you can find these things on sale. And one thing I will say, you can buy this on eBay. If you typically shop the used market, you can run into some fakes. And there's tons of videos out there about how to find fakes for this. And I recommend doing that if you're looking into the used market. But it's such an affordable microphone. It will never break. They say you could use it as a hammer and they're not lying. This microphone was developed, you could probably go back as far as 1937 when some of the first single element mics were being made. Now this is a dynamic microphone, which just means as opposed to a condenser that takes 48 volts to work uh, to power the actual capsule of the microphone or, uh, or a ribbon microphone, which is a thin strand of foil that basically moves and is amplified. So this is a dynamic microphone, so it doesn't need phantom power. You don't need any special treatment to use it. It's fairly high output on its own, so a very cheap preamp could work pretty well with this. Um, and sometimes you see people pair these with cloud lifters. You don't really need that. Could it help? Depends on your preamp situation. But essentially, you could simplify this down to just this in a single channel preamp and you could record your entire band and what we're going to do today we're going to look at recording guitars drums bass and vocals and we're just going to see what happens fun fact sm on sm57 stands for studio microphone who knew by the way this is a cardioid pattern i'm not sure if you can see it here there you go, cardioid. So it kind of has a heart shape. It's gonna pick up a heart. End of life. That, that's terrible. You can't see what I'm doing. One of the cool things about this mic though, you can get so many different sounds depending on how you use it. The microphone on axis on a guitar cabin, you're gonna get a totally different sound than if you just slightly turn that to about a 45 and anywhere in between. You're gonna get different flattering frequencies depending how you position this in relation to your source that you're recording. So guitar cabs are an easy way to describe this. If I'm looking at the cone and I put this right where the cap meets the cone, it's a very present sound. Now it'll sound completely different if I do that. Why? I don't know, let's play with it. All right, day two, I have a haircut now. Recording yourself is really hard. And that's why we have Luke here. Hi everybody. I don't have a haircut. He doesn't need one. He's gonna help us because he's a drummer extraordinaire and it is really hard to play and set up mics and everything by yourself. Ready? Let's do it. Step one, we're gonna listen to what the drums sound like in the room, because if it sounds bad in the room, it's gonna sound bad no matter what mic you put on it. What kind of sticks do you like? Uh, Vic Firth SD9 drivers. The, uh, those sticks are made of hickory, but these are maple. 
So you can, these are actually pretty big, thick sticks, but because they're maple and they're lighter, they feel like lighter sticks, like smaller sticks. Okay, so we're gonna mic up the guitar cab first. And we just have an amp going into a 212. There's two 12 inch speakers on the speaker. There's the dust cap and then the cone. I like to put the mic where the cap meets the cone. I always like to start on axis. It'll give you a good representation of what the speaker actually sounds like. And there's a thousand and one ways to do this, so don't be afraid to play around with it. slapping a 57 on the cap. The second side of the guitar basically doing what I had already done. going to try a couple different things because one mic on a drum set you're trying to accomplish a whole lot with very little so first off let's just kind of back something up put it in the middle of everything makes sense right makes sense to me okay so we're ready to try out some drums we got the mic on the set luke is in there ready to go wave wave at him hey, hey can you hear me that actually sounds pretty cool gonna let him roll. So reaction time, that actually sounded better than we anticipated. What do you think? That sounded really good. Really impressed. I concur, but we're gonna try it again in a different way just to see what happens. Here we go initial reaction of what might sound cool something like this they call it the crotch mic all right let me hear that crotch mic So that position was our favorite so far. Now we're gonna do bass and I want to explain my thinking here. You could totally put a 57 on a bass cab and it would sound cool, but if you already have a 57, you already have a computer, chances are you have an interface that has a DI on it and 90% of the time that's what you're gonna use for bass anyway. This isn't a video about using the 57 on everything just because we can and we said we're going to. It's about using one mic that you have if you only have one mic to the best of its use. And putting a 57 on everything and putting it on a bass cab probably isn't the best use of that mic. Will it work? Yes. Will it make your job harder in the end? Probably also yes. So we're gonna go DI.
So Luke just did one pass of the vocals, figured out where to stand, about a fist away from the mic. We're not even gonna use a pop filter because we're just assuming that all you have is this mic. All right, we're gonna do a double. You ready? Here we go. And by the way, we are not sponsored by Shure. This is not a sponsored video. I purchased this 57 with my own hard-earned money, and I intend to keep it that way. <laughs> Does that even mean? And this is just a video because I adore this microphone, and I use it every day that I work in the studio. There's a reason they say if you can't make it sound good with a 57, it's not gonna sound good. I have to say, I'm a little surprised. I mean, I knew we'd get something usable out of it. Let me say that. I didn't anticipate it going as well as it did. I didn't anticipate liking it as much as I did. And honestly, it's kind of a reality check as to how good this mic really is. And I think having a studio or having more gear can sometimes become a distraction. Limiting yourself to something really makes you look at the source tone before anything else. And I wasn't here. There was no behind the scenes magic happening. We used a very run of the mill preamp. We didn't use any other outboard stuff that you guys can probably see in some of the video. I didn't. I didn't do any tricks. A lot of the plugins we used were factory plugins and we were on Pro Tools, so maybe that's not available to everyone, but I gotta say, the one the one delay we were using on his vocals, and I think we were using basically uh, Fab Filter uh, Pro Q3, which I love. Um, the Fab Filter's compressor used their limiter. I think I used Native Instruments delay the replica xt you could use stock plugins in their place i was literally just pulling presets i did not i wanted to do something super fast um just tried to throw the mix together in under 10 minutes just to really show like source tone and let me know if you're curious about anything we were using if you have any questions about anything i'd be happy to answer them one thing I need to mention, this is Recording Studio Loser's first real video. So if you have any suggestions of things we can do better, please let me know. Video and anything like this is so far outside my wheelhouse that it's ridiculous. I was coming from wanting to teach things and doing a podcast and it just made more sense to show these things visually. So this is my first attempt at that. And if you like it, Hit the like button. It would really help a ton. If you really like it, consider subscribing. Plan on doing this quite a bit more because frankly, we had a lot of fun. So we're gonna figure out some different things to do. If you guys have suggestions, please let us know. Put it in the comments below. And if you're into it, hit the notification button to so you can figure out when we put out these things in the future. If you've made it this far, you're special and you're all right in my book. Thanks everybody, take it easy. Man, $99, come on. If you don't own one and you're a musician, you need to, there's no excuse. I gotta, I should do this more often. I should try these with a few different mics and just see. Let me know if you guys wanna see that.
Let me know if you guys would like to see this with different microphones. Put in the comments below what mics you think you might want to see us do this one mic thing with. And if we do, if we should try a different song. Man. One mic. Come on. Come on. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell if that's what you're into. I don't know. Do you. See ya. Soviet Union. The human torch was denied a bank. Hey, all you kids out there, we're checking mics today. Check, check, check. check. Hey, oh, hey, oh. Sounds good. Echo, very echoey. On now.